good evening, friends. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. And I'm so happy that our panelists have been able to make it. And we, we hope to have a good discussion now. Uh, you're familiar with the topic of the discussion this evening. Before we get into the discussion, I will introduce the panelists once again. If I'm going too fast, please stop me. Feel free to slow me down. Yeah? Is that OK? Yeah, OK, nice. And uh, we will also, we are planning to have a slightly different format. <coughs> Since about half an hour from now, we'll have question and answers. And then we will continue with the discussion. And we can have question and answers once again. So we will give you an opportunity to interact more with the panel uh, members so that the discussion can be more effective, more useful to you. I think interaction is the key message here. We are hoping to tell you a story this evening, a story about financial services in India and the growth of financial services in the decade to come and how well it will grow. So let me start off with Mr. Balasubramaniam, who is to my extreme left. He is the MD and CEO of Billa Sun Life Asset Management Company. Thank you, sir, for being here with us today. <laughs> to his right is Mr. Arun Agrawal. He is Senior President and Global Head International Banking from S-Bank. Thank you, Arun, for taking time to be here. <laughs> professor Lalwani, to my left. He, he is the SPJMR Professor in Charge of the Finance Area. Thank you for taking time. You know me reasonably well by now. I will not reduce myself. And to my right, I have Mr. Avinash Gupta, who is national leader, Deloitte, financial services. And Mr. T.V. Raghunath, to my extreme right, he is the MD and CEO of investment banking arm of Kotak Mahindra Capital Company. So I will now request Mr. T.V. Raghunath to give us a quick break on the, uh, on the development of the financial services and the landscaping of the big picture. What will happen is it will set the context, and you will get a picture in your mind of where we are and how we will flow through the panel discussion. Mr. Rupna. Thanks, Varda. I'm just going to stand uh, to know what's coming here. This is the season of uh, Sankranti, and uh, as, is, as I know uh, here, it's the season of kite flying. Uh, without any intended puns here, I'm going to elevate you 15,000 feet and give you a picture of what is financial services. Uh, more from what are the segments, what are the ends of the spectrum, so that you know what's the breadth and length of what you're going to talk today. Yeah, I think. A, where's the. I need to point it this way or? Yeah, okay. First and foremost, if I were to look for a simple way to describe what is financial services across the various uh, streams of it, most and all of them relate to the flow of money. If all of us went back home today and said, from today onwards, my money, I'm going to put it under the pillow, financial services industry will stop. You'll get to barter system, to whatnot, right? Financial services fundamentally relates to the flow of money. Stop it there. Can you go back? Yeah, leave it there. At different ends of the spectrum, uh, and I'm definitely deliberately using the word spectrum, because certain characteristics change as you move down the spectrum. Be it capital, be it the risk, the talent pool you need keeps changing. At the extreme end is what I would like to call advising. And as you go to the right extreme, more and more capital starts getting called for, more and more risk management starts getting called for. So at one end, you have advising, then comes arranging. Advising is where he comes to me, I have X, X rupees, what do I do? So you tell him, do this or do that. Or you go buy this or buy that. Arranging, you help them raise money, but you don't put your money into the, uh, uh, the, the transaction you're in. Distributing is you collect money from somewhere, distribute it somewhere else. Then comes managing, where you collect it from somewhere, but then you assured somebody that I'm going to manage it for you. There's a managing aspect to it. There's a trust element coming in there. Then goes on to a collect, pull it. Money is fungible. His money is not different from your money. Then I decide to lend to people who need it. So they have a trusteeship function there. Goes on at the extreme to investing. You've got somebody's money, you're going to invest for them. Which in 
from the point of view of the businesses that operate and do these in the different ends of the spectrum. At one end, for want of a better grouping, investment banking and securities business comes at that end. Asset management, commercial banking, and proprietary. Next one. Yeah, it's all there. Uh, if you were to just sit back and see, innocent banking, I can open shop tomorrow. I can advise him to buy a company. Uh, I can advise him to buy another company. Not, no, no bit of my capital went in. My brain power came in. I got a fee. No risk. Right? But the kind of capital I wanted was intellectual capital. Somebody else's money I was advising on. At the other extreme, I'm putting my money to work, which is what happened with, with some of the so-called innocent banks, which got into proprietary trading. And they made very superlative returns in certain conditions. And in the middle, which is what, from a size and scope point of view, we'll see in a minute, is what we call routine commercial banking. Sorry to use these words in campus, BS can mean something else. Fundamental contrast is B versus S, which is big and boring versus small and splashy. Banking is big, but boring. Small and splashy, I would have used some other word, but small and splashy is at the other end of the spectrum. Now, just to help you understand the big and boring, the size and the size dimensions of it, I'm just presenting to you in a very quick form Kotak's journey since 86 to now. This is the ladder of Kotak. S started 86 bill discounting, took his bill of exchange with the Tata Motors, went to somebody else, made a spread in between, I made money. Literally, we took it from X to Y across the street on Fort and made money. And then as India opened up, started a bit of lending. The capital markets, the advisory side came in as India opened up post SEBI. And some of the lending businesses matured. Asset management came. Stockbroking was a lot more different than the yesteryears of <coughs> under a tree kind of a broking. Life insurance opened up in the late 90s. And then, and then came this entity became a commercial bank in 2003, 20 years after it started. And we restructured some of our alliance partners, we became a pension fund manager, and we bought a controlling stake in a commodity exchange. Now, to help you understand the size and scope of, at least for taking as an example, what a bank platform can do, we just put one metric here, the market cap of Kotak. Obviously, I've not adjusted it for inflation or normal stock returns, but I think the numbers are telling. 50 crore is the market cap of Kotak when we, I think, around the time of the event IPO post Harshad Mehta. 100 crores in 98. 900 crores when we just became a bank. 49,000 crores yesterday. Look at the journey in terms of size and scope. Yeah, if I do a CAGR from 50, it's 45%. But it's not too bad from 900 to 49,000 in 11 years, or less than 11 years. That is the prospect that the big and boring can give you, as compared to if I had stuck to the small and splashy businesses. In the same way, we all know bank NBFC, that, that divide, and the under-regulated NBFC segment occupying a lot more of the pink pages than the over-regulated banks are, perhaps. Just to give you a sense, what is their role in the economy? They have their place, places. I have no dispute about that. The entire banking industry, if you see, just ballpark, employs 10 lakh people, 82 lakh, 83 lakh crore balance sheets, total across the 169 banks. 83 lakh crores, 83 trillion rupees, to be putting in trillions. Compared with that, <coughs> NBFCs are about 650. I'm not talking of those which are just registered as an NBFC. 650 active NBFCs, accounting for about 10 lakh crore balance sheet. Look at the size and scope. Meaning how big can one become as an NBFC is, is something you would like to just think about. Look at the kind of shareholder money that has gone in, in contrast. 6 lakh crores is the total shareholders funds of banks in the country for 82 lakh crores balance sheet. NBFCs, on the other hand, is 2.5 lakh crore. 
it's not the same proportion as the asset side. So money flow is going more into banks for reasons which you will understand as we speak to some of the bankers here, because deposit, safety, NBFCs have a different perception. So the capital to asset ratio is a lot worse for an NBFC. So how big can you become as an NBFC is a moot question. Just so that we fathom the, from the first slide, what are the building blocks that varies across these? Just a few pointers here. Customer, which customer are you serving? A retail customer, an investor, a saver, a borrower, a corporate, who? Product, hence what product or customer need and its characteristics. Advising has its characteristics. and led to many ideas as well. Now, in today's environment, for some of you who follow it more closely, the research analyst cannot be anywhere near the banker or anywhere near the blanking platform. So, for example, we were just talking earlier when uh, TV was saying about government doing a lot of flotations possibly this year. When these meetings happen in the good old days, actually the research analyst would sit in the same room as the banker and the management. None of that happens today. So a lot of evolution in that, but research is a fundamental part of every investment banking platform because what you're doing really is managing the flows on behalf of people who have the capital, which is really on the fund management side, on the buy side as we call it, so the sell side versus the buy side. So research, fundamental because what drives volume, which drives brokerage is really the quality of research in many cases and obviously the speed of execution, the quality of execution, the back office, the linkages with the prime brokers and all of the settlement platforms. So research was always a fundamental part and when you look at even, even global investment banks today, they pride themselves for research. So in India you have research rankings, globally you have research rankings, 
the institutional investor research ranking in the US, if you rank number one on it, you can be definitely assured of a very good bonus. So, so research very fundamental, that leading on to in terms of, you know, the primary business of investment banking, i.e., if you read the books around, you know, which have been written about Goldman early days, Morgan, Morgan Stanley early days, it was really about putting people who had surplus capital with people who needed capital. And that business still thrives today. And that is really, I think, really the major part of the business where effectively you can make a fair change as well because if you know the two parties well, it does help. Leading on to that in terms of, I guess, what you might cover separately as well as in the mergers and acquisitions uh, arena, which I guess in India, you know, we do maybe around 35, 40 billion of it every year. And that's domestic M&A activity, cross-border M&A activity, Indians looking outside which are very different perspective than outsiders looking in, and we can possibly talk about that separately as well. And then the whole business which TV referred to, which really became a large part of investment banking, was really the business where you were supposed to be doing it for clients, but you were doing it for yourself as well on your own balance sheet. The whole business of trading, the whole business of investing, prop investing, and effectively creating transactions while you're doing that. So some of you might follow the private equity industry in India, for example. The private equity industry in India is very similar to the private equity industry outside, although it does different kind of deals here. The leverage is not there. But overseas, for example, the banks themselves were doing private equity and competing in some ways with their clients, which led to conflicts and I guess a little bit of the effect which happened in the industry. So maybe that's, uh, that's, uh, that's initial comments on some of the sectors of the yeah. Yeah, IBSI. Yeah, thanks, Avinash. Now, we saw in the initial comment that it's about getting money and deploying money. And we looked at more from a larger segment, larger size type of business. Now let's look at a little more retail end of the business, where from the mutual fund industry, Mr. Balasubramaniam, you will be able to give some ideas on how money is being sourced and deployed more from the retail end, from an asset management perspective. Yeah. I think clearly what you mentioned about, so investing is all about doing the research part right. I think it's nothing but getting an understanding right actually. Research is nothing but getting the understanding uh, in, a, in, the, in the manner that the decision that is being taken to deploy the money effectively, efficiently to generate return for uh, the shareholders and the whoever is of course the parties who is involved in that. So research is of course a common theme and that's why I think the mutual fund operates. The mutual fund operates in a space where the pooling of resources. I think rightly Raghunath put about that he compared very nicely the banking the NBFC space. The two other segment of the financial services industries which are huge in, in nature, who helps actually creating value creations for the investors at, a, at large, at the same time uh, takes care of the needs of those customers to meet their long term goals, which is one is the mutual fund, second is the insurance industry. The mutual fund industries, if you have to put it, though, though we manage about 7.5 lakh crore roughly the size. If I apply this, the principle that is being applied to the banking industry in terms of defining the balance sheet size. In the banking industry, the balance sheet size is defined as the advances plus um, the deposits plus advances is equivalent to a balance sheet size of a bank. If I extend the same principle to the mutual fund, for me the deposit is the money that is coming in deposit with 7 lakh fifty-seven crores. That money is getting deployed in the marketplace in the form of investing in equity, investing in the form of debt investing in the form of money market instruments and so on and so forth. And that's, if I add the up, the mutual fund industry is today is about maybe about 16 lakh crore. I would apply the similar kind of principle for the insurance industry. So the mutual funds in, in essence play very big role in terms of channelizing the, uh, the savings of uh, the country. And uh, some other thing, of course, uh, which I, I think the banking industry is the growth, which I think showed about the ladder growth which has come for Kotak Bank, a similar kind of growth we have witnessed for most of the banks in the, in the country. And that has come mainly because of the large pool of uh, savings that lies in the Indian uh, public, and uh, which is almost about 35% of the household uh, savings, uh, which, is, which still remains. And in that, uh, only about 5% of the savings is, comes into the capital market. And knowing very well that um, the investors need more and more uh, capital, uh, which, is, uh, which is supposed to be put in the risky capital uh, or maybe riskier investments. 
so that it also gives you a equally a higher return as you move forward. Investment banking is all about is is actually doing an analysis and see actually where the uh, companies can make money over longer term by taking the appropriate risk. And that's why I think the investing uh, population also now how to realize the fact that at the end of the day is the invest, my investing investable money can be put into use in the right spectrum of assets with looking at the right spectrum of risk what they are taking for them actually get the long term return. And that's why I think the mutual funds plays a bigger uh, role. Uh, some of the things which of course um, clearly is emerging I think if you look at um, the, the one piece of course is only the investment. Investment is only one piece actually and uh, which you can say is the uh, heart of the, the whole financial service business. Whether it is bank, whether it is uh, uh, insurance, whether it is mutual funds, the investment is only one piece. But surrounding that, there are many activities which need to be, to, uh, which need to be uh, undertaken uh, to ensure that the money is not only actually is made, put into use for generating the right set of return, the risk associated with that is also is taken care of. And the one other area where there has been a significant, uh, significant, I would say the importance which is now assumed the entire financial phase is actually the risk management. And the risk management is one area where it used to be somewhat the function used to exist, but never used to have the kind of veto power which, you have, which is there today, which never used to be there. That means they also become equally powerful, um, such, such as a, a portfolio manager or an investment banker. The risk management is also has become equally powerful. This is again a lesson which is learned, I think, post-2008 uh, uh, crisis. So that's why I think the industry is evolving. And in that context, if you look at it, uh, there is a, an opportunity, of course, uh, remains huge. That's why I think the mutual fund industry is, uh, operates. And that industry is operates in terms of creating capital for, um, uh, capital for uh, the country. And uh, I'm also happy to share. Um, uh, we, as an industry, mutual fund industry is generally is never comes in the radar of uh, Ministry of Finance. Our buck stops at the SEBI. When you can go up to SEBI's and discuss and come back. But I am happy in the last one and a half years, the kind of discussion which goes around in the Ministry of Finance, uh, including a discussion in the parliament, uh, shows the kind of play the mutual fund can play in the development of the capital market, both in the fixed income and in equity. That, that's what I just wanted to highlight. I think ultimately retail involvement is very critical and that's what is the point which is coming out in terms of the importance that the ministry is now giving to the industry. Yeah. Now, we saw the, the large uh, deal side and the retail deal side. Now, when you look into investment banking aspect of the business and the investment segments, there are foreign currency borrowings, mergers and acquisitions, cross-border flows. So, on this point, I would like to have Arun, uh, from your international banking experience, what are your views on the growth prospects for the, these various sources of business and the segments in the uh, investment banking side? No, I think let me just, uh, you know, give a sense of, uh, you know, you have various segments uh, which com com comprise the financial services industry. At the top, you obviously have the banking segment, then you have the mutual funds, you have insurance companies, you have NBFCs, and, you know, a few other uh, securities and things like that. Uh, in, in India, uh, banking services is, is, the, is, is the key portion of this, probably close to three-fourths of, of the industry is actually banking which is not the case worldwide. You know, internationally you could have, you know, markets like US where asset management companies are larger than, uh, uh, than the banking sector. Similarly in other markets like Australia and things like that. But India, you know, for, for various reasons, banks continue to bear the burden of the financial uh, sec sector. Uh, you know, it, the, the other sec pieces of the sec uh, financial services industry st still have to grow, especially the insurance and the mutual fund uh, piece. Uh, you know, you know, India is largely a services uh, dominated uh, economy uh, and uh, what people don't realize is the financial services industry which is also a services industry has been the largest is been among the fastest growing segment within that and is also the largest job creator within uh, within that and that is something which will continue to happen in in, in the future you know right across banks insurance uh, pension funds asset management companies so the job opportunities which will you know, come out of this segment would be tremendous in the future. You know, India's debt to GDP ratio is still fairly, uh, you know, is, you know, low compared to uh, even the developing countries, not alone the developed countries, even developing countries. So there's there, that much more scope for this industry to grow and provide uh, employment uh, opportunities uh, to, to people like them. 
Now, we have looked at the uh, range of the segments. Uh, one of the other important aspects of this is the commercial banking side. I would request Professor Lalwani to give us an idea of how disintermediation is taking place in the commercial banking segment of the business and then take off from there and compare how disintermediation takes place in other segments like asset management back again and what are the challenges that are being faced on the investment banking side in terms of sourcing and deployment of funds. So, Professor Lalwani. I'm very glad that uh, Arun's bank is doing very well on the, on the liability side uh, overall and, and uh, particularly as we discussed on the liability, uh, liability side. But if you look at the broader trend uh, over the last four years, uh, the banking industry has some reason to feel a little apprehensive about the rapid growth that is happening in, in other segments. For example, we were just checking out some the AUM figures of the, uh, of the mutual funds. And they've grown at a very rapid clip over the last four years as compared to uh, the, the, uh, the bank deposits. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, that is something that the banking industry has to be uh, contemplating on. Because this is a, a, a manifestation of a larger trend of uh, disintermediation. While the, the capital markets have not developed to the extent that the authorities would have liked to. And here I'm referring primarily to the bond markets. Uh, RBI would have liked much more to have happened in the, in the, particularly in the corporate bond market segment where uh, users and savers of capital could interface with each other. Not much has happened on that. But the, the saving grace is that as far as the mutual fund industry is concerned, its growth is, uh, is ind indicative of the fact that the investor is going through the mutual fund route and a lot of money is being channelized through that route. Now, uh, as far as banks are concerned, how that, that impacts its, uh, uh, its spread is something that the banking industry will have to seriously contemplate upon. Okay, thank you. We were discussing about the investment banking and the, the aspects of the investment banking industry. Uh, what uh, we could probably look at next is in terms of what is the experience in the investment banking business growth in the last few years, which is reasonably also known to people, and then what sort of growth do you expect in the years to come? Where will the real growth come from? What are the key drivers of growth in investment banking business? Regrettably, this is a tough question to answer. Uh, reason being, as you all know from the uh, papers, magazines, and uh, statistics that's getting published, the investment banking industry is going through a metamorphosis period. Uh, but you know, to cut through what is called investment banking and which parts of investment banking are undergoing metamorphosis to know, is it all doomsday or, or is there something here? Uh, a Goldman, a Morgan, or, or a, uh, a so-called Merrill, which is no longer an institution by itself, uh, what we all know them as investment banks, but what we do as an investment bank, which is advising and fundraising, is, is very different from what those institutions ended up doing. They have A, a sales and trading, securities, research, and sales and trading, which is probably 70% of their revenue. And then they have proprietary and private banking. Private banking is very rich individuals, let's say Warren Buffet's private wealth being managed by Goldman Sachs. Okay. All that goes into an institution which is otherwise known to be an investment bank within courts. So in response to uh, Varda's question on investment banking, I mean now the segment of investment banking, which is I'm going to confine to advisory on M&A, DCM, which is helping raise people, uh, help uh, institutions raise money on the fixed income side, and capital markets. Uh, let's look at the fundamental corporate uh, needs of a developing economy like ours. Are there going to be institutions which need capital? Answer is yes. Are there going to be institutions which need fixed income capital? The answer is yes. Are there going to be corporates which are going to look to either shed businesses or go about acquiring inorganically? The answer is yes. Right? So the question to ask is, what type of investment banking and investment banks are going to actually make a business out of this? And which are the ones undergoing stress? Speaking for those which are Indian-grown investment banks, which are not honestly taken on some of the other paraphernalia of what otherwise globally is called investment banking, we see a pretty reasonably good picture. My M&A business has been robust. We closed 14 transactions last year. Capital markets business was robust. 13 transactions last year, looking better this year. Thanks to the markets looking up. The key question to ask is, when you operate in a certain country, let us say India or Thailand, being a global major, 
let us say I'm out of Wall Street or, or Paris. The poor set of guys operating in the Narman Point office of a global major he must have done his best, worked it by backside off, done everything he could the Indian market offer. And pop comes another guy sitting in the Paris office of that. Some trade and a two billion loss happened, or or he fudged the LIBOR, and uh, there goes the bonuses and job cut stuff.
natural wealth effect. The wealth effect is uh, mainly through uh, gold and uh, until it. And then the time will come. These asset class at the end of the day do not generate economic value. There will be a realistic will come. The, there are certain fixed assets does not create economic value beyond the point. Up to next yes. The economic value is created actually of something which is is actually helping the industry to grow. And if I go and put money in the equity, equity market and give an equity capital to the company, I become owner of the company in many sense. So I get to participate in the growth of the company. The same way if I actually fund the companies to the debt capital market, in many sense I am also getting the profit of the company in the form of an interest income. So that essentially means that I am going to participate in the growth of the company. This is where I believe that I think the, the, the challenge currently is the size where the awareness, uh, the understanding of the essentials of the product is one of my fourth play. And third is uh, uh, making it mandatory for some of these uh, savings to come to the capital market through the mutual and the insurance companies, which is not as robust as what, what we have discussed in the uh, US and some of the other developed markets. And fourth, of course, the last two of the community uh, still do not feel this industry as an industry. Uh, for them to actually create an economic uh, model, for them to actually build a business model. But I mean that uh, I remember very clearly uh, Stephen Kamande Chairman uh, stated, uh, had made a statement from the bank. And it, when they talk about the capacity constraints, they talk about aluminium capacity constraints, cement capacity constraints, they keep building a capacity. And uh, we end up in a surplus capacity or uh, uh, shortage of capacity. A similar kind of capacity constraints that exist today. For the best financial advice in the country. We may talk about all the banks after, but at the end of the day, there is still, yeah, given the fact that there is a huge gap between the savings and the money which has been channeled the market, and the people who have, have an advice coming from a large pool of people, still their industry is facing capacity constraints on the number of advice who can potentially advise the large pool of us in this line. So these are the challenges which, of course, are identified already, not that they are not identified. And one good thing is, I talked about regulation, and today the regulation also has changed. I am also part of the advisory council of SEBI, representing the last year's mutual fund. And some of the things actually we go on in deep, deep, in, in deep and, and in depth rather, and discuss actually what are the things we need to be done to make it really work. And the first time I was uh, the investor awareness program, I can keep saying the investor awareness will be created, awareness will be created, but somewhere there has to be money. We will have a kitty actually for money to go and spend so that it reaches actually the mass. And now the kitty is being created. In some form or other. And this is the way I think it's getting addressed. Maybe it is a question of time for the industry to get the new reserve link credit as we move forward. When do you see the different industry uh, giving the banking industry a grant from the company? Well, uh, we, uh, Arun uh, made a point about the, the business and the business. Uh, obviously, he would be aspiring for that kind of. Uh, How do you see him planning out? I mean, more on a lighter line. First of all, my muscle power has to be much better than planning muscle power. Which is, which is, I call it in the body, association of the body. Today, they are much more powerful than the body which we represent, which is a major one. And I mean, just put it on a lighter line. And uh, the very fact that 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 the mutual funds the other day earlier have to earn the the right by uh, by uh, clearly uh, uh, showcasing the uh, the ability of the mutual funds to deliver for the investors. Which time and again, time and again, time and again, we have seen a multiple round of prices in the last many years. But fortunately, the, the mutual fund industry is never disappointed the investors. And we of course go through the pockets of disappointment. That no, I'm not saying it's not there at all. At the same time, Indian mutual fund industries have handled one of the worst prices in the name with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, brave fail in the market, resilience and ensure the investors are never put in the At the same time, the equity market having gone through the multiple round of uh, the scams and, uh, and the fluctuations, the long term return on equity mutual fund scheme in excess of the that essentially means the money is invested in the market has delivered the which is what in my uh, our belief is uh, uh, which is the growth is, is, is right on the path.
you can tell from the banking industry is wonderful. I think that the time will change. Today the banking industry is uh, largely focusing on how to meet the needs of the customer in the form of borrowing. I think the growing wealth effect also will emphasize the importance of having a very high focus on channeling those resources and destroying investors who go into the deposit, who go into the deposit, who go into the other world and take the That's why the global engineer banking industry also has got a huge income, especially in the private sector, I can vote for it, those are listed in the banking space. They have an income which is interest income, treasury income, and of course the, the uh, other income, which also includes the uh, includes the uh, in our business case. It might be that the pie will grow and it will also become a necessity of the banks. Furthermore, to, furthermore, to look at one sustainable earnings, secondly, I think the high income is high ROE and other CD on their own investments. I think these are some of the changes that happen and I'm sure industry will grow. So do you think that it's to de-risk your revenue uh, uh, Some more reliance on bond market uh, assets being more desirable. Uh, the bank is so keen that uh, the market will be having greater growth. Yeah, I think the very important point to make, we have to keep debating the ANC. Which is segment you want to be in? Uh, do you think that the equity is only asset class where you are going to have to do or do you think that the large opportunity is that uh, the bank will come to one market? But if you look at the investor's behavior in the country, whatever I may say about the asset allegations, whatever I may say about the wealth whatever I may say about building the inflation, at the end of the day, every investor that has followed a pattern of about 30 to 40 million rupees, or 60 percent of the money that has come there, into the business process. So with that, why companies are not very large? And third is, which of industry, also is out of the total assets, some like the total assets, some like the flows, only about 2.5 flows is not going to be in the rest of the money. And we lend to the bank industry, to the extra about 40% of our money is invested in the bank of the real deposits. They are one of the largest investors. They are one of the largest investors in the Indian companies, commercial companies. So they are also in some sense they are playing a bigger role in the, the corporate, uh, corporate world in terms of meeting its financial needs. This is where I think the huge opportunity is right. Like, uh, we as a firm, uh, last year when we analyzed the investors' behavior, clearly we found the great opportunity that lies on the uh, fixed income uh, space. For us, we can manage the fixed income space. So that we can go and play very unique role in the market market development, which is, which is the fact that I think it's just uh, evolving. Yeah. 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 Is a matter of time. On the point which Mr. Bhana made earlier, that uh, how to make the mutual fund industry big and competitive to, with the banking system. Uh, through your uh, knowledge, experience of the international market and how things happen there, what do you think can, should the mutual fund industry do or the reforms do so that we can be able to push the mutual fund industry more and 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 more and